Good morning, listeners. Welcome to English Fluent Podcast, the podcast dedicated to giving your day the best start. I'm your host, Sarah, and today we're diving deep into the world of morning routines. With us are two special guests, John and Emily, who will share their insights on creating a morning routine that energizes and prepares you for the day ahead. Let's begin. John, Emily, it's wonderful to have you both here. Thanks, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be here. Hi, Sarah. I'm excited to talk about morning routines. Great. John, could you walk us through your morning routine in detail? Absolutely, Sarah. My alarm goes off at 6 a.m. sharp. I resist the urge to hit snooze because I've read it's better to get up right away. The first thing I do is reach for a glass of water on my nightstand. Hydration is crucial after a night's sleep. Then, I spend about 10 minutes doing some light stretching exercises to wake up my muscles. I love that, John. I'm a bit of a late riser. My day starts at 6.30 a.m. Like you, I begin with a glass of water, but then I sit down with my journal. I spend about 15 minutes writing down my thoughts and setting intentions for the day. It's a peaceful practice that really clears my head. That's a great habit, Emily. After my stretches, I head to the kitchen to prepare a nutritious breakfast. I usually have scrambled eggs with spinach and a slice of whole grain toast. While eating, I listen to an upbeat playlist to set a positive mood. Sounds delicious, John. I keep my breakfast light and quick. A bowl of mixed berries with Greek yogurt and a drizzle of honey. Then, I step outside for a brisk 20-minute walk. The morning air is so refreshing, and it's a gentle way to get my body moving. I follow my breakfast with a workout, too. I have a short but intense 20-minute workout routine that includes push-ups, sit-ups, and some weightlifting. It's amazing how much energy it gives me for the rest of the day. After my walk, I dedicate some time to reading. I pick up a book, usually nonfiction, and read for about half an hour. It's a quiet time for learning and reflection before the hustle and bustle of the day. I wrap up my morning by reviewing my to-do list. I jot down the most important tasks for the day and prioritize them. This helps me stay focused and efficient. I do something similar, John. I review my schedule and make sure I'm clear on my appointments and meetings. Then I take a few minutes to meditate. It centers me and helps me approach the day with calmness. It's inspiring to hear how both of you have crafted morning routines that work so well for you. Hydration, nutrition, exercise, planning, and mindfulness. All key components of a successful morning. Listeners, I hope you found some valuable takeaways from our discussion today. Thanks, Sarah. Remember, everyone, your morning routine doesn't have to be complex. Find what works for you and stick with it. And don't be afraid to adjust it as your life changes. The best routine is the one that fits your current needs. We've heard about the structure of your morning routines, but let's delve a little deeper. John, can you tell us why you chose these particular activities? Sure, Sarah. I believe in starting my day with intention. Drinking water first thing is about rehydration, but it's also a moment of mindfulness. As for stretching, it's not just about physical flexibility. It's a metaphor for being flexible in life and preparing to face the day's challenges. That's beautifully put, John. For me, journaling is a form of self-communication. It's about checking in with myself and setting a positive tone for the day. And the walk? It's my way of connecting with nature, even if it's just a city park. It reminds me that there's a world beyond my to-do list. It's clear that your routines are more than just a series of tasks. They're thoughtful practices. Emily, how do you ensure you stick to your routine? Great question. Sarah, consistency is key. I make sure my environment supports my routine. My journal is always by my bed and my walking shoes are ready by the door. It's about removing barriers to good habits. I agree with Emily. I also prepare my workout clothes the night before. It's one less decision to make in the morning, and I have a rule, no phone until I've completed my routine. It keeps me from getting distracted. Avoiding distractions is crucial. Now, what about breakfast? 
How do you make sure it's both nutritious and enjoyable? I think it's about balance, Sarah. I choose ingredients that are healthy but also flavors I love. The act of cooking is also a sort of meditation for me. It's a process I enjoy, which makes the meal even more satisfying. For me, it's about simplicity. I don't want to spend a lot of time preparing food in the morning, so I opt for things that are easy to put together but still nutritious. And I always have my breakfast in a quiet spot where I can enjoy it without rush. It sounds like mindfulness is a common theme in your routines. Let's talk about exercise. How do you find the motivation to get moving early in the day? Motivation can be tricky, Sarah. I focus on how good I'll feel afterward. Exercise is a non-negotiable part of my day. It's not just about physical health. It's about mental clarity. I view my morning walk as a treat, not a chore. It's my time alone with my thoughts. Plus, seeing the sunrise is always a bonus. It's about finding joy in the small things. That's a wonderful perspective. And finally, planning and mindfulness. How do these fit into your morning? Planning my day gives me control. It reduces anxiety because I know what to expect, and it allows me to be more present during the day because I'm not constantly trying to remember what I need to do. Mindfulness for me is about grounding. It's easy to get caught up in the rush of life. Taking a few minutes to meditate helps me center myself. It's like setting an internal compass for the day. Thank you both for sharing such personal insights into your morning routines. Listeners, I hope you're finding inspiration in John and Emily's words. Remember, your morning routine can be a powerful tool for setting the stage for a successful day. Absolutely, Sarah. It's about making choices that benefit you, both in the moment and in the long run. And don't forget to be kind to yourself. Some days won't be perfect, and that's okay. It's about the overall pattern, not the occasional slip-up. Wise advice from both of you. We'll continue our conversation after a short break. Stay with us for more insights on crafting your ideal morning routine. Thank you for tuning in to English Fluent. If you are enjoying our content, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring you more great podcasts just like this one. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest episodes. Thanks for your patient and let's continue our journey to fluency together. Welcome back to English Fluent. We're here with John and Emily discussing the intricacies of a morning routine that sets you up for success. Before the break, we talked about the importance of mindfulness and planning. Let's explore further. Emily, how do you adapt your routine on days when things don't go as planned? That's a reality we all face, Sarah. Flexibility is key. If I miss my morning walk due to rain, I might do a short yoga session indoors. The goal is to maintain the essence of my routine, even if the activities change. I second that. Adaptability is important. For instance, if I'm traveling and can't do my usual workout, I'll do a bodyweight routine in my hotel room. The idea is to keep the momentum going. Adapting to circumstances while keeping the routine spirit alive. Excellent advice. John, you mentioned earlier about not checking your phone first thing in the morning. Can you elaborate on that? Certainly, Sarah. Our phones are portals to a world of information and distraction. By not looking at my phone until after my routine, I protect my early morning peace. It's about starting my day on my own terms. I've adopted a similar practice. I avoid emails and social media until after my breakfast. It allows me to focus on my intentions for the day without external influences. It seems like a digital detox is part of your morning. Now, let's talk about the role of breakfast. Emily, you mentioned simplicity. Can you share a favorite quick and healthy breakfast recipe? Of course. One of my go-to recipes is an almond butter banana smoothie. It's just a banana, a tablespoon of almond butter, a cup of almond milk, and a handful of oats blended together. It's nutritious, filling, and takes only minutes to make. That sounds delicious and easy, Emily. I'll have to try that. For me, a quick breakfast might be avocado toast with a poached egg on top. It's simple yet packed with good fats and protein. 
Those are great ideas for a healthy start. Now, exercise is a component of both your routines. Can you share some tips for listeners who struggle to find motivation for morning exercise? Sure, Sarah. Start small. Even a five-minute stretch or a quick walk around the block is better than nothing. And remember, it's about building a habit. Consistency leads to motivation, not the other way around. I'd add that finding an activity you enjoy is crucial. If you dread running, don't force yourself to run. Maybe you'd prefer dancing or swimming. Make it fun, and you'll want to keep doing it. That's very encouraging. Now, mindfulness and meditation have been mentioned as part of your routines. How did you get started with meditation, and what benefits have you noticed? I started with guided meditations. There are plenty of apps that offer short sessions for beginners. The biggest benefit for me has been reduced stress. It's like I've learned to press a pause button on life's chaos. I was initially skeptical about meditation, but I gave it a try, and it's been transformative. It helps me stay centered and focused throughout the day. Even just a few minutes can make a big difference. It's inspiring to hear how these practices have positively impacted your lives. As we continue, let's discuss the importance of planning. How detailed are your daily plans, and how do you ensure you follow through with them? My daily plan is fairly detailed. I list my tasks in order of priority and allocate specific times for each. To ensure follow-through, I check off tasks as I complete them. It's satisfying and keeps me accountable. I keep my plan a bit more flexible. I have my must-do tasks, but I also leave space for unexpected events. Life is unpredictable, and being too rigid can lead to frustration. That's a great balance between structure and flexibility. As we near the end of our time together, what final thoughts would you like to leave our listeners with regarding morning routines? I'd say don't underestimate the power of a good morning routine. It's the foundation of a productive, fulfilling day. Find what works for you and embrace it. And remember, it's a personal journey. Your morning routine should reflect your needs and goals. Be patient with yourself as you figure out what that looks like for you. Thank you, John and Emily, for such a rich discussion. And thank you, listeners, for joining us on English Fluent Podcast. We hope you've gained insights and inspiration to craft your own morning routine. Keep striving for those bright mornings, and you'll find your days shining brighter, too. Please, I want to see your morning's routine bellow in comments. Just say anything. That is all for this episode. See you next time.